So now we've got our volume created that we want to mount onto our CentOS machine. We need to add our host. So we go down to our host and we can authorize access to our actual um, to our actual volume. So we need to add the host in here. So our host name is um, uh, oh sorry, it was called uh, Quanta Client. And we can give a description again for admin purposes. Uh, purposes. This is the you know, accounting department, or whatever you want to put in here. It's a Linux machine. And then, oh yeah, we need our IQN. And that's exactly why I went in here. So you need your IQN. Um, before you can actually add your host. So, how do we get that? Well, let's go back to our CentOS machine. This was a brand new CentOS machine. This was where we left it. You can see the, the SSH stuff we had to do earlier on. This is exactly where we left it. So, we can now do a yum update, just to make sure this machine is up to spec. It's got everything on there we need. It's just good practice to, um, best practice or whatever they call it these days to uh, make sure it's up to speed and it's had a bit of an update. Okay, give that a couple of seconds. That should run through this fairly quickly and we now have CentOS 7 up to date. Quite the update today. There we go, last one, 53-53. Good Lord, in hindsight, I should have done that earlier. But again, it's good for you to see. Do a quickie on update. Once that's actually finished, we can install the iSCSI initiator utils. Here we go. Yum, install iSCSI initiator utils. Go yes. That's there. Excellent. Now we can do more slash etc slash ice guzzy slash initiator name. And there's our IQN. So I'm going to take that now. I'm going to copy that. Move that out of the way. And back in here, what's our IQN? That's our IQN. And we're going to go OK. And that's going to add our host. OK. So now our host is added, we can move on to the next phase. OK, so the next phase. The next phase is now we have a host in here with its IQN. Whoops. With its IQN. But we haven't actually told the volume that it has a client device out there now, um, or it can have a client device authorized to have access. How do you do that? Well, right click, assign host access. So let's assign it. It comes up with the only host in our list. This would come up, like I say, many, many hosts. Let's give it access. So we tick that, say okay. Now we can go back to our CentOS machine and do the final phase, which is to actually mount up um, our iSCSI uh, device from our Quanta store and to create a file system on there. So let's go and do that. Now the final bit then. So we need to get this, um, this device usable on our CentOS machine here. So if we quickly go uh, more slash proc slash partitions to see what's on our machine here, we can see we've got the OS and our swap space. So we've got nothing else there. We can see that we have done, um, we have an iSCSI initiator name and we have the iSCSI initiator utils on here. So we need to do iSCSI uh, admin and we're going to discover 
where our actual um, quanta store is. So we're, we're going to discover our LUNs. Um, so we're going to go discovery uh, minus T. Send me your targets. I was about to type send me. Send targets minus p and then the ip address of our actual quanta store machine so to get our quanta store ip address we can see that it is on um 10.113.38 so this was the internal ip address of our actual quanta store so hopefully that will return us some targets and it has it's exactly what we wanted now we have our targets. We actually want to, um, you know, mount those targets up so they're usable. Because again, you know, if we do more prop partitions, there's nothing there. So to get them actually mounted up, we want to again use iSCSI admin, and this time minus minus mode uh, is a node of this actual uh, LUN. Um, we want to say, <coughs> excuse me, the target name. How do we get the target name? Well, that's why we went and did the discover. So I'm going to take the target name here. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it. Now we have our target name. Our portal. Well, this is our IP address again. 10.113 dot thirty eight dot one six seven and then finally what do we want to do well we want to log in excellent we have a successful login login to do, 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 successful so now we go more proc partitions and there it is we have a dev SDA so now we have a dev SDA, we want to either use that completely and entirely, in which case we can just make a file system on it, or we could fdisk slash dev slash SDA, and it would ask us, you know, uh, we can go M for help, it would ask us, do we want to create partitions? I don't really want to create partitions, I just want to make a file system on here. So I'm going to make a quick, um, MUKFS uh, ext3 on dev sda um, and I want to use the entire disk. Do I want to proceed? Yes. And this was why I made it slightly smaller, uh, that 18 gig, because the way it's going to go now and create an 18 gig file system on, uh, so it'll be a single partition by default and it'll be an 18 gig file system on our quanta store. Just going to write the super blocks and hopefully any second I did make it small so that this would go a little bit quicker hopefully it will come back any minute to us come on if it lasts too much longer I'll pause now there we go good uh, I'm on a muckdeer slash mnt slash iSCSI just to create a mount point and then I'm going to just mount this so mount slash dev slash sda want to, uh, it might be sda1 uh, might be sda1 because it'll have created one um, one partition on there um, let's see I can't remember off the top of my head. Let's just go for that. CD slash MNT slash I SCSI LS lost and found. There we have it. Lovely. So there you have it. That's how to create a pool, then a volume, add a host onto our Quanta store. So we went through creating our pool creating a volume, adding a host, giving access to that host, sorry, giving access to the volume to the host, 
and then on our CentOS machine we just quickly installed did a yum install of the iSCSI uh, initiator utils found our target and then basically you know mounted up our file system now you would a bit like the endurance storage uh, video you would now need to add this to your uh, MNTFS tab you also need to uh, make sure that iSCSI D starts on boot um, and you want to make sure that you have these targets mounted have this target mounted um, on boot but as a quick simple how to do it how to get OS Nexus usable and create partitions sorry create volumes that you can use within your private network that's how you do it and we have a usable file system on uh, our Quanta store provided on IBM software so my name is Eamon Killian I hope these videos are useful this was a quick and dirty introduction on how to get going using OS Nexus on IBM software thank you very much okay and welcome back for the very last part um, there was one remaining strand that I wanted to cover we've now mounted our device we've got it running that's all fine we've just covered that um, but there was one outstanding thing I've just noticed that I didn't do which was quickly to show you how to add a write or a read cache on the actual volume that we just created um, and I hadn't covered that so I'm going to very quickly show you how to do that so basically I've gone back into uh, OS Nexus and you don't actually add the cache here as you can see you don't have an option to do it you've got all the other things like instant rollback from our snapshots etc but that's at the volume level it's actually at the pool level if we go back to the pool we've assigned our disk this was our RAID 1 pair of 1 terabytes and we carved out a volume but we want to add an actual cache um, and to do that you right click here and you can see here we can add a cache device so by clicking on add cache device we can now use that other 800 gig um, it's actually coming up as a 959 gig um, device on our quanta store and we can either add it as a read cache here or we could add it as a write cache and if we had again if we had many many disks they would appear in here and you could take your choice you can have some smaller read caches, some smaller write caches. It's how you actually configure your machine in advance. And it's well worth working that all out on either a giant whiteboard or a big piece of paper or in Visio or in PowerPoint. However you do that as an architect and you work up your infrastructure um, design in advance. We only have this disk available, so I can either appoint it in here as a write or a read cache. But once I do that, we now have our cache available. So that is how you do it. So if I go back into storage pools now, you will see that I now have a write cache available. And that's its little icon here. We can have a look at that device. So I wanted to make sure I covered every strand, so we now know how to do read caches, write caches, how to create our uh, pools, our volumes, add the host, authorize access for that host, um, go onto our host, add our iSCSI uh, initiator, find our IQN, and um, that allows us to come back in here and create the host access, and then basically um, discover our targets mount our targets or log into them um, and then basically create a file system or partition that uh, iSCSI however you want to approach it and then finally put a file system on there and mount it up so thank you very very much for watching i had forgotten to cover how to do the caching there glad i remembered to do it and get it in there uh, my name is Eamon Killian. I hope you're finding these videos useful in terms of a quick introduction to IBM software and getting used to using it. Thanks very much.